Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book and record to play for you. Today book is Black Beauty from 1981. So let's get started. This is the story of Black Beauty, Anna Sewell's famous classic, retold and illustrated by Osney Brown. We can read along together. And whenever you hear Black Beauty whinny like this, means to turn the page. Ready? Did you turn the page? Good. Now we're ready to begin. Once there was a little black colt. He lived in a green and pleasant meadow with his mother. There were other colts there too, and he had great fun galloping and romping around the field with them. One day, when the playing became rather rough, with much fighting and kicking, his mother whinnied to him and said, These are very good colts. But they have not learned manners. I hope you will grow up to be gentle and good. Always do your work with a will. Lift your feet up well and never bite or kick. Not even in play. The little colt never forgot her advice. The colt played in the fields until he was full grown. He grew big and strong with a pretty white star on his forehead, one white foot and a soft, shiny black coat. One day, Squire Gordon saw how handsome he was and decided to buy him. I will wait until he's well broken in, he said. The horse's master replied, I'll break him in myself so he won't be frightened or hurt. Patiently, he taught the young horse how to hold a bit and wear a bridle. He fed him oats and talked softly to him as he put on the saddle. Then he taught him to carry his master, to wear a harness, and to pull a little cart. When the man from Squire Gordon's came for him, the master said, Goodbye. Be a good horse and always do your best. Thus, the young horse left his first home. <laughs> the new home was pleasant. There were two other horses, Merry Legs, a fat, jolly, dappled gray pony, and Ginger, a tall chestnut. They all became great friends. The first time the new horse carried his master, he remembered his mother's advice and did exactly what Squire Gordon wanted. Mrs. Gordon and their two little girls were at the door when they came back from the ride. We couldn't want a better horse, Squire Gordon told them. What shall we name him? He's really quite a beauty, said Mrs. Gordon. What do you say to calling him Black Beauty? Very good, said the squire. Black Beauty shall be his name. And so it was. Black Beauty enjoyed many happy years at Squire Gordon's. He loved his master and his mistress and their children. And he enjoyed carrying them on his back or drawing them in the cart. He also loved John Manley, the coachman who drove him when he and Ginger were put in double harness in the big carriage. One day, a new stable boy named Joe Green came to help John. He was young, but he was willing and wanted to learn. Soon after Joe came, Mrs. Gordon became suddenly ill in the night. John saddled Black Beauty quickly, and off they went for Dr. White. It was a long, hard run through the village, over the hill, on past woods and fields, eight long miles at a full gallop. Dr. White was in bed, but he dressed quickly, mounted Black Beauty, and dashed back as fast as the tired horse could go. John, the groom, walked all the way back. When the doctor and beauty returned, little Joe Green took care of the weary animal. But he didn't know that black beauty should have had a blanket. And he let him drink much too much cold water. By morning, the poor horse was terribly sick. <laughs> With the aid of the horse doctor, and thanks to weeks of loving care, beauty was nursed back to health. But it was a long time before he was quite well again. Black Beauty's speed and strength had saved Mrs. Gordon's life. But her doctor said she would have to move away to a warmer country. And now, if you'll please turn the record over, we can go on with the story. Here, 
Everyone was very sad when the house was closed, and Black Beauty and Ginger were sent to an estate called Earlshall Park, where they drew the carriage for their new mistress. They were treated well enough, but there was one careless groom. <coughs> Late one night, this groom was galloping Black Beauty home from the village over a stony road, when one of the horse's shoes came off. The stones hurt the bare hoof dreadfully, but the groom whipped Black Beauty on at such speed that the horse stumbled and fell violently on both knees, sending his rider sprawling. Beauty's knees were badly bruised. Even after he had been put out to pasture for several months, his knees were still so swollen that his master couldn't use him. So, Black Beauty was sold to a livery stable. <laughs> now Black Beauty discovered how many different kinds of people there are in the world. He was rented to anyone who had the price of a few hours' drive. Some drove him well, but others drove him badly, whipping him up steep hills and never allowing him to rest. Poor Black Beauty. He was becoming so worn out that he could scarcely do his work. So the owner of the livery stable had to put him up for sale at the horse fair. There, Black Beauty met all sorts of horses, young and old, sleek and shabby. There were many kinds of men bargaining for them, too. One quiet, cheerful little man, after looking at the other horses, came back and bought Black Beauty. His name was Jerry Barker, and he was a London cab driver. <laughs> when they came to Jerry's home in a little side street, his wife Polly and their children all ran out to see the new horse. It was a lively greeting. The children petted him. Polly brought him some bran mash, and Jerry rubbed him down. Then Beauty was put into a comfortable, clean-smelling stall. Life was not so bad after all. For several years, he worked as a cab horse. It was hard work. But Jerry was such a thoughtful driver that Black Beauty was quite happy. Jerry used to say to him, Do your best and leave the rest. It will all come right some day or night. <laughs> One New Year's Eve, it was bitter cold with a sharp driving sleet. Jerry and Beauty had taken two young men to a party. The men made them wait for two hours in the icy wind and sleet. And Jerry caught a bad cold. He gave his horse extra care when they got home. But the next day, he was very sick himself. Black Beauty never saw him again. <laughs> Jerry recovered, but he had to get up his cab and take easier work. So Black Beauty was sold to a baker. The baker overloaded his cart so much that the poor horse could scarcely pull it. And so he was sold again this time to a cruel wagon owner who used beauty even worse than the baker had. <laughs> One day, while trying to pull an overloaded wagon up Ludgate Hill, beauty fell down and couldn't get up by himself. He was helped up and led home. It was plain to see that Black Beauty's working days were over, so he was sent off to the horse fair once more. This time, he was bought by a gentleman farmer named Mr. Thoroughgood, who could tell that Beauty was a good horse who had seen better days. With gentle care, Mr. Thoroughgood helped him back to health and strength, so that by spring, he was almost as handsome as ever. <laughs> then Mr. Thoroughgood sold Beauty to three very nice ladies. When their groom saw him, he said, That is just like the star Black Beauty had. When he examined it more closely and saw that it really was Black Beauty, he was overjoyed. Beauty, do you know me? He cried. I'm Joe Green, who used to be Squire Gordon's groom. And indeed it was the same Joe Green, groom to be a man. It won't be my fault if you don't have good times from now on, he said, as he patted the horse happily. And so Black Beauty's troubles were over at last. The ladies promised never to sell him again, and with Joe Green to care for him, and with pleasant green fields to run in, Black Beauty had nothing to fear. He had a happy home for the rest of his life. So, so that was Black Beauty from 1981. So 
If you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And our next book will be... Sabre Shortcake, Meet the Stone Bee.